Welcome into Quarantine Conversations uh, from Gamecock Central. I am Colin Taylor, joined by Wes Mitchell, as always. And today our guest is Justin Rowe, um, who has been through a lot <laughs> over the last couple of weeks. Um, Justin, we'll kind of let you share your story here in a second. But uh, Rowe played for South Carolina for three seasons, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and was his senior year was the 2018 Super Regional Team, Mark Kingston's first year. Uh, but Rowe kind of had to battle some cancer uh, recently, just recently uh, got deemed cancer free, finished up his chemo treatments. Um, so Ro, kind of take me through what these last couple months have been like for you, um, how you found out about it, the treatment process and how it felt to kind of finally be done with it. Yeah. So um, I actually wasn't even in the country when I found out I was living in Australia, um, trying to join up in their professional baseball league. And um, my actually roommates there, he had a girlfriend who was a, a PT, physical trainer. So she knew um, about the body and stuff. And uh, it's a crazy story. I was changing a light bulb in our house, just a normal activity. And she noticed a little bump kind of in my rib cage um, armpit area. And she was like, hey, like, what's that? And I was like, I don't know. I've never seen it. So, um She's like, you should get it checked out just in case it could be a bacterial infection or something like that. It was my first time out of the country. I had no idea and I trusted her. So I went and got it checked out. And then um, after a pretty extensive process of getting blood work, biopsies, ultrasounds, um, on December 19th, I was deemed with stage two Hodgkin's lymphoma. And then the next day I had to fly back out to California and uh, get ready to start treatment. I guess not trying to harp on a lot of the bad stuff, but when you first hear cancer, when you first hear Hodgkin's lymphoma, um, what kind of goes through your mind? What kind of emotions do you feel when you hear something like that? Yeah, um, immediately uh, the doctor like was ready for me to cry and kind of break down, but I, w I wasn't really in that stage yet. I was more of in the shock stage mm -hmm. and I just, I didn't know quite what to think. I was, not with my family. I didn't have really that many friends out there. I had just met people over there. I'd only been there for about a month or so. So I wasn't extremely familiar with anything there. I was just alone. Um, and it wasn't until I actually talked to my parents when I called them with the news and where everything kind of hit all at once. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but if you hear your parents cry, like it's almost immediate for, for me to start crying. So that's when that started. Take me through, you obviously fly home, um, back to California. Um, when did you start chemo? How long was your chemo treatments? Um, and how did those go compared to maybe what you were told or what you thought going into it? Yeah, so obviously I have no experience with it prior. Um, I have had some friends who have dealt with um, it before. Um, so I just kind of talked to them to see what to expect. And none of it was really the glitz and glamour. It was like, hey, like get ready to yeah. feel crappy. Um, not eat much, not really being like, able to do anything. Um, but my treatment started the second week of January and I finished on Friday. So May 6th, almost uh, like five months. Um, I actually did two types of treatment. My first treatment was an AVBD medication, which is typically what everybody gets. Um, and then my second treatment um, or the second round I did five of the AVBD and three of this AV Nevo. Um, it's a it's a trial drug that takes away a lot of the side effects, um, but right now is remaining pretty steady with the same positive pos positive results as the first one. Um, what was was there something that you weren't expecting that happened to you during this chemo? What was what was that process like trying to kind of navigate it? And, you know, obviously the hair loss happens that you get weak and what was that process having to deal with some of the side effects that maybe you weren't ready for, or were maybe a little bit worse or not as bad as you kind of originally thought? Yeah. So, uh, on, on all my treatment days, they kind of have to give you a steroid or your body would just shut down. Mm -hmm. So they infect you with a steroid and that is good for a couple of days. So they didn't initially tell me like, Hey, you're going to feel really good for like two days after your first treatment. And I, they were like, yeah, like some people don't have that harsh of side effects. Some people have really harsh side effects. It just depends on the person. So after my first treatment, I was like, oh, wow, I feel almost normal. Like, you got this at that I, point. I got lucky. Yeah. yeah. 
and then the second day hit and it was like I got ran over by a truck and I don't think I left my bed for three days I didn't eat I was just absolutely out for the count and uh that's when like my major weight loss started yeah. um for the first time I think I dropped close to 20 pounds and a month the first wow. month of treatment yeah I was I was this little skinny kid again and um back to your juco ball my, days oh well yeah yeah <laughs> even before I was probably skinnier before <laughs> that um but thank god for my mom she started to force feed me and made me eat and started to slowly get my weight back up was there a low point I hate to harp on some of the bad stuff but um, was there a low point for you in, through all this yeah so it, it was kind of like a mesh of a, of a night it was uh after my second treatment and I had thrown up a couple of times after the first one, but I thought I kind of figured out when I was going to and how I could stop it. Um, and we actually had a birthday dinner. This was before quarantine and all that started. And uh, it was right about when I could start eating full meals again. Mm-hmm. And I just ate like a sandwich, a regular sandwich with nothing else, a turkey sandwich. And mm-hmm. I actually got sick in the restaurant. Oof. I had to leave the restaurant. And then it just continued all night long um, to the point where I just was uncontrollably throwing up, sweating, laying on the bathroom floor. Um, and that's where family, like my sister, she would just sit with me, listen to music, just in the bathroom. Yeah. And those were the days that were definitely hardest that if I were alone, I don't know where my mindset would have been, but with them there, it was a lot easier. You've mentioned family a couple of times. How important were they for you to kind of lean on through this, you know, three, four month process? And how much of your progress mentally do you kind of attribute to them and being there for you? Almost all of it. I mean, yeah. without them, I, like I said, I don't know where I would have been mentally. I know I would have been alone and not know what to think. Um, but just sometimes just laying with me when I really wouldn't feel good. You know, my sister would come home from work. I know she'd be tired. She has school work and then she'd just come home and hang out with her older brother. She has a life to you. She doesn't need to do that stuff. But, you know, I, I appreciated it. My parents were just my rocks throughout the whole thing. Um, anytime that I got down, they just reinforced that positive mindset and uh, kept me going. You and I have talked a little bit just from your days at Carolina, being across the country, how important family was to you um, from being them in California and then you in South Carolina. How nice was it to not that it's nice to go through this but to be in california for your treatments and did this strengthen your guys' bond at all um having to go through this together yeah absolutely i would say it has um i don't know if anybody really knows my parents divorced a while ago and um it kind of brought us all closer together and kind of reminded us of the times before um but especially you know with my mom and dad just having to be there for me was like a good positive step towards everybody relationship in the family. So I appreciate that. Um, with cancer, did, was there ever, I know you always hear it and there's death kind of hangs over you a little bit. Does that creep into your mind at all? Do you, did you allow that to creep into your mind at all? Or how did you kind of handle taking these treatments, but knowing that if this potentially gets worse, things could not be as good as they are right now. Yeah. So everybody in my family, every experience I've ever had with cancer was mm-hmm. negative and it didn't turn out well. Right. So initially when I was first diagnosed, I was like, it's just that our family, it's just the way it's going to work. Mm-hmm. But after a slight low point, uh, there was no way that I was going to give in and let this win because I want to live my life. I want to live it to the fullest. I want to do things I want to do that I haven't had experience yet. Um, and once I kind of got that mindset, that other thought never crept back into my head once. Um, Mm -hmm. and I will never let it come back. Yeah. Um, I know coach Kingston's obviously had some stuff to say when it first came out that you, that how much support did you get from that coaching staff, from the guys that you played with, um, at Carolina, what was that network like communicating with them and communicating with some of those guys that you played with for two or three years? Yeah, they, they called me all the time. Um, I developed some of my best friends uh, in life at that school. Um, Madison Stokes calls me probably twice a week, FaceTimes, Christian Flint, Carlos, Riley Hogan, um, Eddie Demarius, everybody. Um, I actually talked to Noel Campbell a yeah. little bit yesterday. 
Um, there's bonds that I created over there that will last for life. And I'm so happy I was able to make the journey cross country. Um, the coaching staff was great. Um, Kingston and their support uh, meant the world to me. It helped me out tremendously. Um, and I couldn't be more appreciative of anybody. I guess, when did you kind of first get the sense that you were going to beat this? I know, and I think in March, you announced that it was in remission. Um, when did that tide start to turn for you to where you realized, okay, there is a light at the end of this tunnel? Yeah, so I don't know how, how familiar you guys are with it, but for me, the lymphoma bumps were pretty visible and yeah. easy to see. Um, the sad thing was about after three weeks or three treatments, I couldn't see a difference. And I was like, I don't know if this stuff's working at all. Um, and then it was like the fourth one was like the magic treatment that where they actually started it or something. Yeah. And all the bumps on my neck and my shoulder and my chest started going away. Um, and then after the fifth one, it was, I couldn't feel any. So I was like, this is working. And then that after that visit was when I, they told me that I was in remission. What was that conversation like? How, what kind um, of emotions did flow through you at that point? It was again, one of those things of shock and just like, hell yeah <laughs> like, let's go <laughs> yeah um my parents went in there again seeing your parents cry then i started you know getting emotional but it was happy tears which was nice right how often do you cry when was the last time you cried before this um arkansas and then yeah. before that <laughs> i couldn't tell you when <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can count all these times on one hand that you oh yeah cried and i mean the majority have been over the last what four months at this yes. point 100 it was the last yeah. four days be, <laughs> uh, you know a majority yeah. of them Right. Um, you obviously get the news that you're done, you're cancer free. Um, what was the kind of continue with it? What was that moment like for you? Um, being able to see that and then kind of have this process really come to an end for you. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, there was plenty of things in my life before where I wouldn't say I took for granted, but I didn't appreciate as much. Mm -hmm. And now I will 100% appreciate and I don't want to just hang out anymore and lay in bed and watch Netflix. I want to go out and do things. I want to get out of the house. I want to get out of the country. I want to travel. I want to coach. I want to go watch baseball games. Um, stuff that, again, like now I didn't take for granted, but didn't quite appreciate as much as I should have. I now have a, a newfound, you know, appreciation for it. What was it like going through all this? Not all of it was obviously during this COVID-19 stuff, but what was it like having to go through treatment? being someone with a weakened immune system because you're going through chemotherapy, um, having this virus kind of come around at the same time. Yeah. It sucks now because <laughs> now that I can finally do stuff, the world's on lockdown. Yeah. So. You can't go to a bar. You can't go out to Nothing. eat. Can't do it. Yeah. Uh, um, but it, it was pretty aggressive. Uh, once it kind of broke out, my doctors, Hey, you're not able, like you can't go to in and out, like yeah. have somebody bring you in and out, have somebody bring you food. Um, if you get this, it's not most likely going to kill you, but it has a strong possibility just because of how aggressive it is and how low your immune system is. Uh, and for me, that's difficult because at this point of treatment, I was in the stages of the lesser um, side effects. You can eat again. Or, you yeah, I could eat. I could. I was starting to run, play basketball out front, and that had just to be shut down. Like, hey, um, anybody comes near you decontaminate wash your hands shower i was taking like four showers a day sometimes if like my dad had to work people over or something like that yeah. um so it was pretty aggressive but i think it was necessary because we didn't want to take that risk right um what kind of you kind of already touched on it um what did this process teach you about life and about I mean, you've already overcome a lot just in your professional career and then playing baseball, but what did this teach you on a completely different level about life and, and perseverance and things like that? Yeah, I mean, just don't don't take your life for granted. And I know I'm lucky and I, I'm a survivor, but it very easily could have went the other way. I could have said, hey, can you just fix that light for me in Australia? And I would have went probably months without knowing and it would have spread, and then I would have came home, and it would have been much worse. Um, so I would say if anybody has any health concerns for you, look into it. They're, they're not just saying it to say it. You know, they're looking out for you. Um, and when you do, just fight the hell out of it. And, 
again, I just found a new appreciation for little things that, like I said, I didn't, not that I didn't appreciate it before, but now I just appreciate them a little bit more. I guess you have a big celebration planned for once all this lockdown stuff lifts. Yeah. So I have like a combo of cancer beaten and birthday (laughs) to celebrate. We are supposed to go to Cabo uh, at the beginning of June and that all got canceled. Mm Mm-hmm. So hopefully at some point we'll be able to to rebook that yeah. and uh, kind of get a trip in or something. What's next for you? Do you have a plan for what you want to do after this? Uh, I thought I did, but with COVID, <laughs> it kind of shut everything down. Um, I'm kind of in the, the no man's land right now, but I know that I want to be involved in sports and especially mm-hmm. baseball. Um, no offense to the, the you know, sit at your desk jobs. I don't know if I could do that. Right. Uh, I think I'm too antsy for it. Um, but I would love to get into coaching, but I know with all the schools being shut down, nobody's really getting fired or hired. So mm. uh, it'll be tough to kind of get into that. Um, but if you guys know any jobs open, let me know. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what <laughs> what um, did you learn from Kingston? And I know we've kind of talked about it, you know, personally um, over text or whatever. What did you learn from Mark and, um, those guys at Carolina and your year that you spent uh, undergrad taking your one sociology class? Yeah. Um, I actually learned a lot more than, than I thought I was going to. I thought I had a pretty good knowledge of baseball and how situations go. Um, but watching them do it, obviously they have hundreds of years combined experience on that coaching staff. Um, I feel like Coach Mead and Coach Current and Coach Couch are all could be head coaches anywhere. I know Coach Lake already was. Um, and Kingston's going to do a great job with that program. But just little things that you don't really think about as a player that you have to take into consideration as a head coach, um, those were all big parts of, of learning and becoming a coach and transitioning from player to coach. Um, and I'll take everything that I've learned from them and apply it and keep learning. And I actually call him sometimes and be like, hey, like, did you watch this? Like, what would you have done or something like that? Yeah. Um, and he's always – wants to talk and talk baseball and just kind of guy he is. Well, she got anything? Yeah. I'm, we got to talk about some positive stuff yeah. um, for a second, but I, I did, I, I know you, your advice was, Hey, if, if you, if you see any possible signs, um, you know, go get yourself checked out. Um, I was curious, what was there, were there any other signs that as you sort of look back, like, before your friend said, Hey, you might, you might need to go ch- get this checked out. Did you feel different at all? Or were you just sort of going about your life completely as normal before all this? That's the thing. Um, I didn't have any of the common symptoms that people typically show when they have cancer. Um, I had like a rare symptom, which were just night sweats, but I was living in Australia and it was like 120 in the summer and we're, you know, young adults and we didn't have much money. So we didn't want to blow up our AC bill. So we're just like, oh, it's just hot. Like everybody was kind of sweating at night. So I didn't think much of it. Um, I wasn't having weight loss, no appetite loss. I was working out four to five times a week, going to work four days a week, playing baseball four days a week. So it was just another, you know, any other day. And uh, I'm really glad that she decided to step up and say, hey, go get this checked out. Yeah, definitely, man. So, hey, let's go back to your senior year. I I know – your junior year at Carolina, you know, you, you had a good year, but your senior year, I mean, I was looking back through your stats, man, you're 347, uh, you hit 357 in SEC play, um, 15 multi-hit games, seven multi-RBI games. What was it about your senior year that just you were able to take that, that next step? Was it more just finding that comfort level, sort of getting settled into SEC competition, or, or what was it about that year that just you took everything to another level, man? Yeah, so I think my first year over there, I kind of got out of my element of uh, what I was trying to do. Um, when I got there, it was, you know, Alex Destino, John Jones, Carlos Cortez, these just big dudes who hit bombs. And as much as I want to do that, that's not my game. I mean, I do hit a couple home runs, but that's not my game. I got to work counts. I got to do what I do. I think that first year I was trying to be Alex Destino. I, that's just not who I am. And I realized that, you know, about midway through my junior year, and that's when I started to hit and play every day and get back to who I was. Um, and then just try to carry that over into senior year. Um, got pretty comfortable. Um, didn't start off the hottest, but, you know, decided to pick it up midway through. <laughs> yeah, and uh, 
you don't know this, but I'm a, a member of the short man's club as well. <laughs> so yes, I got to I got to say thanks for doing it for all the short guys out there. But um, did, did you wear that as a chip on your shoulder? I know like playing high school ball myself, that was always something you kind of, at least I used that to personally motivate myself. Was that ever a part of your thought process as you go out there as just a smaller guy who's producing more than dudes that are a lot bigger than you a lot of times? Yeah, so early on in high school, yeah, they I was getting recruited and they're like, oh, wait, you're only 5'8", five, 5'9", five, yeah, no, we don't take small guys. And then – I don't know, some SEC school in South Carolina side so take the five nine guy and it seemed to work out. So once I actually got on the campus, I kind of knew that size really wasn't going to matter. If you balled out, I think people were going to like you and you're going to be in the lineup. So uh, once I got to school, I tried to throw it out the window, but it'll always stick with you. And I don't want to hear any, I don't want to hear anything about you not being able I don't want to hear anything about you not being able to hit home runs because you were like one of the few guys that actually cranked one out at Hoover. And yeah, that, that hitter's ballpark. I mean, uh-huh. that's one where it's like 400 feet to like right. Yeah, I mean, like, that, that's a, a dead zone for us. My junior year, yeah. I think the tournament, like a whole thing hit like yeah. 12 home runs or something like that. So I think Los had what, two or three? Like, and like, yeah, he had three. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who had the better? I think he said he had short man syndrome. Who had the most short man syndrome between the two of you guys? Because you guys are both pretty even height. No, uh, he's shorter than me. Oh, he's shorter than you? <laughs> how much? How much? Uh, Depends on if his hair is up or down. Okay. Uh, I would say I got him by at least an inch, two inches. <laughs> at least an inch. <laughs> now, is that like scout inch where they're just adding two or three inches to you, or is that like – Oh, no, that's legitimate in our house playing video games inch right there. Okay. What was the – I think hey, – oh, Go ahead, Wes. No, I, I got to hop in. He, he mentioned in and out, so I know I you're a California it, guy. I don't want to hear it. Um, Colin, first of We've all, talked about Colin's it. food <laughs> takes – are some of the worst I have ever heard. So you're muted during this conversation, Colin. <laughs> but is there – how does in and out compare to what you found on the East Coast? And as a California guy, I mean, I'm, a, I'm assuming you're going in and out is number one as far as fast food cheeseburgers. But is that the case? That's a consensus, number one. There is no doubt. Nothing will change my mind on that. I probably eat it twice a week right now. <laughs> um, you know, being in South Carolina and Australia, I didn't get, a, didn't, didn't get to eat it as much, so I'll make up for it in these uh, upcoming years. But I'll, I'll say just for the price, the food, you can't beat it. Like, Five Guys is good, but I'm not trying to pay 20 bucks for a drink, fries, and a burger. That's fair. You know, I didn't know it's eight seventy five, and you're ready to rock. Getting good Mexican food out there now? Oh, yeah. Compared, that's compared to what you're getting at, in Colombia. Yeah, that's the one thing I was disappointed in when I got to South Carolina. Maybe <laughs> the only thing was the Mexican food. But, yeah. yeah, it's my favorite type of food, so I've been crushing it. What was your favorite place to go to in the SEC for food? Did you guys get any, like, local stuff? I know you guys get per diems every now and again on the road. Yeah, uh, my first year in Tennessee was pretty cool. We were, like, right across the street from, like, a little outdoor mall. Okay. Um. Vanderbilt was good. We had barbecue every day, and it was never bad, which which was good. Um, but yeah, my senior year we got catered a lot of food. We didn't get to go out as much. Tyson didn't um, give you just the per diems, and yeah, it was more <laughs> the the hotel for breakfast, and then yeah. they would ship in something for lunch or something like that. Where was your favorite place to play? I know we're kind of getting into you know general baseball stuff now, but um, when you think back, where was your favorite place outside of Founders Park? You can't say Founders Park. Favorite place to play. <laughs> Um, I would have to say LSU. I think that's the best environment I've been in. Um, I didn't get to play Mississippi State, which uh, that was the weekend I blew my appendix. I couldn't travel with the oh, team. That's right. So one of the main fields I wanted to go to, I couldn't go to. Um, but LSU was absolutely deafening. Even when they played in Hoover, mm-hmm. me and LT had a relay, and I was maybe six or seven feet behind them. And he had no idea what I was saying for a That's relay amazing. call, which is extremely impressive for their fan base. Yeah. I just – I lost it. But that's – um, I think Mississippi State was – that was the one Graham got to go on that you didn't get to go on, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you missed yeah. out on Brett Carey shoving and mm-hmm. – that On that series? Sunday. Yeah, yeah when they, a... uh, they wanted to get into Hoover. Yeah. You didn't like Como? When it was 45 degrees and rainy. Absolutely not. No. Was it, uh, Kentucky was the weirdest one. It snowed all morning on a Saturday. I remember that. I and remember we're that. like, no, we're not playing. There's no shot. And then uh, Coach Lake comes in at lunch and goes, hey, uh, 
you guys ready? We're like, no. yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, sure enough, we got the text like, hey, that like, game's still on. Like, how is the field playable? Ready. It's been snowing since 5 a.m. And sure enough, it was, you know, 30 degrees and freezing, but we pounded out like 30 hits or something like that. It was you, in, yeah, you guys won that series. Did you win yeah. the series? No, we no, actually lost the series, but we crushed them on that Saturday. Yeah. That was the series. I remember it because they made their shortstop made this diving play on Cullen mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. hole. All right, I remember that one now. Yeah, I remember. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to yep. remember. Um, see, now we're just telling baseball stories at this point. Yeah, that was the weekend. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they crushed us on Friday. Yeah, they crushed them Saturday, and then um, I think Trey Squires hit like a grand slam on Sunday to kind that of put it away. Right. That sounds about right. You love that field too, I bet. That cliff that, field? that where oh. there's a lip behind um, what was it, left field, where you like there's like this six foot drop off. Oh, I don't know. I just remember the the walls were brick. Yep. So nobody wanted to go near the boundaries of the field. And right field, it felt like it was 210 feet away. So and they had like a lefty loaded lineup and they're just popping balls up and they're gone. Yeah. That uh, Georgia field too, where it's like a short porch, oh. 290 to. <laughs> Carlos, it went into the frat houses. He lit- like literally into the frat house. Yeah. Lit- that like- was one of the farthest balls I've ever seen hit. Yeah. He does. He does that quite a bit. That yeah. The ball you hit against LSU is still my favorite. The, oh, other, the one like over my head, yeah, <laughs> where you're literally taking like an axe, like, like hack yeah. ass. I watch out. it sometimes, I'm like, how in the heck does that one squared up or get out? I, I just f- don't understand it. I freeze framed it, like, I watched it back when you first hit it, and I freeze framed it. I think your your arms are like here, yeah, and you like get it out, and it gets up in like an air draft, and yeah, it's like casting a fishing st- fishing <laughs> rod, <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Wes, you got anything? I th- I think we're good, man. Awesome. Um, bro, we appreciate it, my bud. You get Absolutely. to go out. What's for lunch today? Because y'all are out there on the West Coast. Yeah, I had in and out yesterday, so I don't know what <laughs> what's going to be in store today. <laughs> See, I hate in and out I cannot – I can't. Gosh, all right. I end the call. All right. Yeah. This, How do I yeah. end? Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, we're done. We're done. He's never going to answer my text messages again at this point. <laughs> no, I've, I feel like a lot of people who are from California have that because there's so much hype around it, like, yeah. all the time. That if it isn't the best burger you've ever tasted, it's, a, like, a letdown. Yeah. So I just think the hype is kind of getting to it yeah. at this point. Because uh, Tyler Johnson said the same thing. Tyler was like, yeah, dude, I don't know. It's not that good. And I was like, you're lucky you throw 100. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not going to step in the batter's box and take you and challenge you. Yeah. <laughs> now, it was good. I just, I don't know. I didn't like it as much as I thought it was strictly average. Mm. I know that's hearsay, but I thought it was strictly <laughs> average. So, well, we, yeah, Wes is like shaking his head. I get, yeah. I get. <laughs> I get crap all the time for having really bad food takes. <laughs> Maybe you just need to try it again. Maybe we have a different a different opinion. Fly me out. We'll see. <laughs> if you yeah, right? Out there, I'll, I'll make yeah. it. We'll do an entire like series out there, food with Roe or something like that. And we'll, oh, I'm so down. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it work once all this shit gets lifted. Yeah. So, Justin, we appreciate it, man. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, guys. Yeah, no problem. And if you need anything from us, text call just shoot it our way yeah same thing if you guys need anything just let me know awesome appreciate it again man thanks justin appreciate awesome. it man uh, stay safe guys yeah you too buddy. Yeah. later